The Layers system in Photoshop is like transparent sheets stacked on top of each other. Each of the layers can contain images, text, or any other graphics. Now as we view them on screen here, we're actually looking down through the stack. The stacking of layers allows us to manipulate and edit individual layer content without affecting the remaining layers. It's a very powerful feature for tasks like image editing, composition and the presentation of images. For us photographers, it's the method we use to create composite images and montages. It's for adding that vital element that the image maybe needs because photography is an art. Layers will often be used for layout purposes with multi-images to a page. And we're quite used to seeing triptychs as an example. Now I've used the image of this soldier for many years to demonstrate layers. I've never found anything better, to be honest, so if you've seen this image before, my apologies. This was in fact a wooden soldier which was life-size, but I have removed it from its background. Now this technique we're going to look at at some stage in the future, but now please accept that we have a transparent background and we can see it in the layers on the right and sitting over the top of that on its own independent layer is our soldier. Now with the move tool selected from the top of the toolbar on the left, I want to move my soldier around, which is easy to do, given that he's on his own transparent layer. But before I do that, I do need to select the layer to tell the software this is the layer I want to edit. So with that move tool, I can move my soldier anywhere on that canvas. I could make my soldier larger or smaller and do any editing I felt was needed. One thing you're going to spot as I move these around, you will see pink lines flash up on the screen. These are turned on by default and they are smart guides. What they enable us to do with artwork like this, you can see I can just click and I can push this right into the center of the frame. It helps me. They, they treat the movement of the soldier a little bit like it's a magnet and help me to snap it to the center both horizontal and vertically. Now that's going to be quite useful when we start to place images within layers. I can turn my soldier off by just touching the eye. But with this soldier, what I'd like to do is move him to the left. Let's position my soldier about there because what we're going to do is we're going to use layers to make a parade of soldiers. Now if I move my cursor into the grey area to the right of the thumbnail, I can right click and I can duplicate the layer. Now when I do that, I'm going to keep the same name. You can see it appear in the layers palette, but of course we can't see anything on screen. The simple reason for that is my First soldier is now sitting right behind this one. It's like they're in single file in front of me. Although there's two there, I can only see one. So what we're going to do with the second soldier I've just created here, with the move tool, I'm going to move him a little bit to the right. Now you can see that the guides are helping me to line these up pretty nicely. Now there is a much quicker way to make copies of our layers. It's a shortcut key again, but it's one of those you're going to use quite a lot of. So it's worth writing this down and learning this one. Control J will always copy a layer or a selection you've made within layers. But here it copies my layer. The layer's automatically selected once it's copied. So all I've got to do is to click and drag. And there I've got my next one position. I want to get it right. I'm just looking at the distance between the shoulders. It's not crucial for our demonstration, but 
nice to show it's easy to do. So let's do that a few more times. I'm going to hit Control J and I'm going to drag my soldiers until I've got a complete parade. Now as you can see I have created seven soldiers in all. But remember from a previous video, if I wanted to increase the canvas size I can do that independently to the soldiers that are sitting above it. What I could do with here though is to center the soldiers in the middle of my canvas. You can see I've got a little bit of room on the left hand side and quite a bit on the right. Well we don't have to move them individually. If I select just one of these layers I can add the others by holding the control key or I can select one layer, hold the shift and just click the last and all those in between will be selected. With the move tool still selected from the toolbox, I can now move all of them into the center of my artwork. Let me just click back to the canvas to remove all of those selections. Now remembering just for a moment that we have to select the individual layer that we'd like to edit. But here I've got a canvas that's sitting right at the bottom of my stack. Remember, we're viewing the image on the main screen down through all of these. So we can place any color onto this layer we choose. So I'm gonna to go to my color picker. Let's go down to my blues. I'll just pick a reasonable color blue. Click okay, there it is in the foreground of my color picker. I can go to this option here and pick up the paint bucket tool and I can click and flood the background with color. Now of course working in layers gives us the freedom to change any of these things any time. We can make the background color much darker and once again as long as we've got the paint bucket tool we can paint it into the background and we've got an image that's coming together. Now for those of you who are new to Photoshop's layers, we're just scratching the surface here. There's an enormous amount of creativity that the layers opens to us just with the background alone. But let's keep things simple. What I'd like to do next is to select the soldier that's in the middle. Here's the one. So I've identified it by turning the layer on and off and I can select the layer. Because what I want to do is to reselect my move tool from the top of the toolbox and I'm going to move this soldier. Now if I pick up my soldier and move him to the right, he moves behind all of those soldiers. Well, if we look over to the layers, that's completely logical because all of these are sitting above him. Which means that if I move that center soldier to the left, he's going to be marching in front of the other three. And we can confirm that pretty easily. Now, although it's not necessary for what we're doing here, we can also change the stacking order of any of these layers. And that's a simple drag and drop. So the soldier that's standing in the center, I can click drag and drop him right at the top of the stack. And now, of course, he would be marching in front of all of the soldiers, just because we've changed the stacking order. Now, this video is rapidly approaching 10 minutes, and I think for a basic layers video, that's probably going to be enough. When we save our image as a Photoshop file, all of these layers are retained exactly as they are now. So we could open this image up tomorrow, or in a year's time, it'll be exactly as we see it here. We can amalgamate one or as many of these layers together, and because they've got transparent backgrounds, we can retain that. So once I've saved this as a Photoshop file, and let's just assume for a moment that I did want to keep all of my soldiers in a line, I could select them all, not including the background of course, and if I go to the top right of the layers here, I can choose here to merge the layers and it's asking me to merge the layers that I've selected. 
So my soldiers are still able to be moved, although now they would need to be moved in a group. They're still able to be selected, so I could increase my canvas size and do something with my background. You can see the creativity that Layers offers us. We're going to be coming back, I think, a number of times and looking at some of the more creative stuff that we can do. But I'll see you in the next video.